Hello, Ron Mithril here once again, and we've reached the halfway point. With that, it's time to move on to another of my favorite robot masters, Pharaoh Man. So you command, so it shall be done. Unfortunately, I think he only appeared once in the cartoon. A shame, really. He looked cool, had good voice acting, and he also was one of the very few robot masters to have a reaction other than just stunned surprise to his, uh, to his power being taken by Mega Man. In fact, he was actually pretty ticked off by it. He delivers this sudden punch to Mega Man's face, which somehow made for a really funny scene. These are sand scorpions. The problem with them is you never really know how fast they're going to move, so you don't know how much time you have to deal with them. Up there is a desert fly. Annoying due to the fact that it stays out of your way so you can't hit it, and it peppers the landscape with its shots. Unfortunately, we, we missed that jump, so we have to take the long path. Which is, of course, populated with bug copters. I guess they're trying to fill in as scarabs here in the pharaoh's tomb. Whatever the case, they're as annoying as ever. And here we have a mummira. They kind of remind me of a Genesis game I used to play called Decap Attack, where you basically played as a mummy who uh, threw his head at people to attack them. So yeah, it was a weird game, but pretty fun, actually. Had we managed the shortcut, we would have ended up here. And now we must deal with hovers. Sort of a spiritual successor to footholders. Far less annoying, though. They constantly go in the direction you need them to go, instead of behaving like footholders, which go wherever they darn well pleased. Uh-oh. Did I just trigger Pharaoh Man's trap card? I suppose we shall find out in a little bit. I like those blue flames, very mystic up there. Nice decor. So now we must deal with hovers and mummyras together. But you can kind of lead the shots from mummyras, so they're not too bad. Oh, an extra trap card. Okay, time for Pharaoh Man. This battle's all about reflexes and timing, so it's actually pretty fun. If you can get the timing right, that is. So against all odds, you actually want this guy to close in on you and use his powerful attacks. If he charges like that, you've got... Oh, get up there. When he charges, he stands still for a good bit, so you've got some time to counter. Uh, if he does it up there, though, it's all about timing. When he does it down here, it's a lot easier. Yeah, just keep doing that for a while, pal. Oh, or not. Back to timing. Uh, whoa, okay. Those are a little trickier to dodge. Oh, rule long distance action, okay. Whew. And Pharaoh Man is down. Goodbye, Pharaoh Man. You were enjoyed. But, but wait a minute. Two extra lives and no curse? Hmm. One up curse. Busted, plausible, or confirmed. Now I've got your power. And that power is the Pharaoh Shot. Quite a nice one, actually. It's almost a chargeable metal blade. You can charge it up and fire it off in different directions. Very useful. So with that, five down, three to go. That one was good. That was a fun stage. Pretty challenging. Uh, lots of outtakes. Uh, yeah. Enjoy! Here we have Hovers, kind of a reincarnation of the footholder, albeit less annoying, really. They- oh! Yeah, sure, I say that now. Uh-huh. Sort of a reincarnation of footholders. Oh, stupid bat. Being in close... Co oh! Bad timing, bad timing. So here we have desert flies and sand scorpions. The desert flies like to pollute the atmosphere with all their shots, while the desert scorpions... Ah, uh, well, never mind. Against all odds, you kind of want them to be close to you and using as charged shots.
Oh, if you can time it right. A few more hovers here in conjunction with Mamira. Ow, bad mummy. You just have to be careful and really watch the timing of things here. Ow, oh, so close. Against all odds, you kind of want this guy to close in on you. Ow, not like that. It is worth noting when they're first tunneling up, sand scorpions cannot be hurt by... Ow, ow, ow. Okay, good. Made the jump, so we get to take this path, which gives us a shortcut and a bullet to the face. Well, so far, our poor guy seems to be stuck in a loop. Oh, spoke too soon. Oh, darn it. So the Ferroman stage does have an alternate path, and you can barely make this jump even without the rush coil. There we are. So down this path, we we get a shortcut, we also get a rare item. We just have to get past a desert fly and two sand scorpions, and that's it. And there's the balloon adapter. Think item number one for Mega Man 2, basically. It acts the same, just looks different. And with that, we get a shortcut down here, bypassing the bug copters and a few mummies. Quite nice. This stage had a good mix of things. There was a lot going on, but not too much to make it really feel impossible. And as such, I really liked this place. I give our dear friend Pharaoh Man an 8 out of 10. Fighting him without using the flash stopper, he was actually a little easier than I anticipated, but still, he does require some pretty precise timing if you use the method I used. Which actually was pretty fun. The stage itself, the main worry is things like the sand scorpions. It's mainly that first room there with the quicksand. A special note, as my friend Kit showed in his videos, in the Game Boy version you could use the rain flush to stop the quicksand. Not so in the NES games, so don't count on trying that. The rest of the stage itself really isn't so bad. Uh, the bug copters weren't in a precarious area for a change, thankfully. The mummies. They're usually not too bad if you just anticipate where they're going to throw their heads and you can slide under them and things like that. It's mainly just the first room and dealing with Pharaoh Man himself, but still, it's enough of a challenge that I think it warrants an 8. So, nicely done, Pharaoh Man. You weren't cheap and you got a high rating. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Farewell, Pharaoh Man. You will live on forever in our hearts.